One spring morning in 1910, a young Filipino boy lay unconscious on a hospital bed at Manila's General Hospital. His feet and hands were swollen, twice their normal size, and he was minutes away from death. He was suffering from a widespread disease known as beriberi, a concentrate made by a young, innovative chemist named Robert R. Williams was injected into the dying boy. Within hours, the boy regained consciousness and quickly improved. Although this boy survived, almost 4,000 other Filipinos died of this disease that year. Robert R. Williams was devoted to the innovative work of isolating, synthesizing, and mass-producing the anti-beriberi substance he later named thiamine. Synthesizing the vitamin allowed affordable production of large quantities of thiamine. He recognized the worldwide impact this synthesized thiamine could have through the enrichment of foods. Thiamine-enriched foods consumed by people around the world would eliminate beriberi as a widespread nutritional deficiency disease. With the addition of, of vitamins to the food supply that we have, it's really rare for, the, for anyone who has any kind of reasonable diet to have a, a total thiamine deficiency. On February 16, 1886, Robert R. Williams was born to a missionary family in Nellore, India. As a child, he witnessed much suffering from beriberi. Little was known about this disease, and there was no cure. When Robert was 10 years of age, tragedy struck the Williams family. His father became paralyzed in an accident, forcing the family to move to Greenwood County, Kansas. While living in Kansas, he attended the Southern Kansas Academy in Eureka. He passed the county examinations for high school at the age of 13 and graduated in 1903. Robert worked diligently, earning enough money to attend Ottawa University in central Kansas. Two years later, he transferred to the University of Chicago, where he graduated with a bachelor's and master's degrees in chemistry in 1908. Remembering the suffering of the Asian people, he moved to Manila to work as a chemist. While on the island, he met Edward Vedder. Knowing Robert's interest in Barry Berry, Vetter assigned him the task of finding a cure for the disease, a task which would consume him for several decades. At the beginning of World War I, Robert joined the U.S. Chemical Warfare Service as a research chemist. In 1919, he was employed by the engineering department of Western Electric Company, whose name was later changed to the Bell Telephone Laboratory. This full workload did not keep Williams from continuing his research to find a cure for Barry Berry. He converted his home into a laboratory and used his garage to house the experimental rats and birds. He also saved money by building his own laboratory equipment from common household items. Thus he continued his decades-long research for the cure of beriberi. Beriberi is a disease which has plagued mankind for thousands of years. It was first recorded in Chinese literature in 2700 BC and was known to decimate troops, crews on vessels, and entire populations. Beriberi literally means I can't I can't in the Sinhalese language of Sri Lanka. It was given the name because victims were often unable to stand. It affects the muscular, circulatory, nervous, and digestive systems. It manifests itself in two ways. Dry beriberi affects the nervous system and causes muscle atrophy. Wet beriberi affects the circulatory system and causes massive swelling. There was considerable debate over whether the cause of beriberi was a nutritional deficiency or an infectious agent. Robert was convinced that it was a nutritional deficiency and performed countless experiments to substantiate this. From the work done by Dr. Christian Eichmann, Williams knew the antidote for beriberi could be found in an extract made from rice husks. Williams' plan was to complete the three steps common to most chemical research. First, he must isolate enough of the unknown substance to perform experiments. Secondly, he would need to split the substance into its chemical components. Then finally, he could synthesize the compound from these chemical components. Once created, the compound could be tested as a cure for beriberi. The only reliable method for testing the effectiveness of this extract was the rat test. In this test, Robert would twirl a beriberi diseased rat around by its tail and then place it on a flat surface. A rat suffering from beriberi would be unable to recover its equilibrium and run away due to muscle and nerve impairment. If the rat was able to ride itself quickly and scamper off, the rat was cured and the extract was successful. In September 1933, Robert R. Williams successfully isolated the pure form of the anti-beriberi factor. He named this new vitamin thiamine. 
Upon reaching this milestone, Robert said, It was a marvelous victory to see the crystalline vitamin for the first time, at last, after 23 years of effort. Williams wanted thiamine to be available and affordable to all people. Therefore, to keep others from patenting and limiting its availability, Williams applied for a patent. Other scientists believed the action was unprofessional. Despite this controversy, the patent was granted to Williams in 1935. His decision to do so impacted the world by encouraging competitive manufacture, making thiamine available to everyone at an affordable price. Finally, in the spring of 1936, Williams had identified the process for synthesizing thiamine and had produced a quantity of synthesized thiamine for testing on a population of rats that were dying of beriberi. On the third day of treatment, Williams picked up the rat, spun him by the tail, and set him down. The rat then wobbled for a minute, composed itself, and ran off. In Williams' excitement, he phoned his assistant, Robert E. Waterman. When he answered, Robert Williams exclaimed, The rats say yes. The synthesized thiamine was now ready for mass production. With the fine-tuning of this process, the cost of thiamine steadily dropped. Nutritionists in 1941 began to refer to thiamine as the morale vitamin due to the immediate improvement experienced by thiamine-deficient patients treated with the synthesized vitamin. It was recognized that the same disease, beriberi in the East, existed in a subclinical or mild form throughout the U.S. This relative thiamine deficiency caused the symptoms of fatigue and depression. Two doctors showed just how important thiamine is in the diet. They put 11 women on a diet which was only slightly less in thiamine content than the average American's diet. After three months of this diet, the women were irritable and inattentive to the details of their tasks. The results of this test emphasized the importance of adequate thiamine in the diet of all people. Therefore, Williams launched a nationwide campaign for the vitamin enrichment of staple foods. Because of his innovative work in isolation and synthesis of thiamine and food enrichment, most rice, cereals, and grains are enriched with vitamins, reducing the impact of nutritional deficiency diseases on people around the world. I think one of the things that is important about it is that a lot of times in maybe lower economic countries they have um, rice as their staple. They may provide even rice to the countries as you know goodwill, you know, food service through Red Cross or whatever those different programs. And uh, since we know about thiamine, we know that we can enrich the rice or provide other foods along with it to make sure that they don't have that deficiency. With proceeds from the patent, Williams established and chaired the Williams Waterman Fund for Dietary Diseases at the Research Corporation for Science Advancement, which impacted developing countries worldwide in their effort to combat dietary deficiency diseases. He remained chairman of the Food and Nutrition Board while maintaining the full-time job of directing war-related research for the U.S. government as World War II emerged. Impressed by the suffering he had witnessed as a child in India, Robert R. Williams devoted his life to finding a cure for beriberi. His innovative research impacted the world through his isolation, synthesis, and mass production of thiamine. By promoting worldwide enrichment of staple foods, he forever changed the world by reducing the suffering and death caused by dietary deficiency diseases. J. Williams Hinckley, a former president of the Research Corporation for Science Advancement, described Williams by saying, Robert R. Williams, the scientist and the man, leaves a rich legacy to inspire and guide the many whose lives were touched by his.